Why do we work hard to solve small problems? Why do we reinvent ourselves and our clients over and over? And why are we giving away marketing strategy for free? It's time to bring home bigger paychecks. It's time to create the lifestyle we deserve and to make a greater impact. This is the Fractional CMO Show, and I'm Casey Stanton. Join me as we explore this growing industry and learn to solve bigger problems. Hey, it's Casey here, and welcome to another episode of the Fractional CMO Show. And in this episode, I want to tell you all about my book, The Fractional CMO Method. Now, I don't know if you heard, but my book hit the number one Wall Street Journal bestseller list the week of June 11th. Super, super thrilled and appreciate all of the support from all the listeners here, uh, everyone on our email list, um, and all my friends uh, who picked up a copy. The book is, let me flip over to the last page, it's 145, excuse me, 147 pages long. Um, it is a, uh, you can get a print book, we also have uh, digital copies and an audio book. And the book goes into kind of what it takes to be a fractional CMO. I'm super thrilled about this because this is the roadmap that I wish I would have had when I started off as a fractional CMO. So let me just kind of lay out what's in the book. So in the front of it is the foreword, and it's written by a really great copywriter named Paris Lymphropoulos. Paris is a killer, killer copywriter in the um, supplement and health space, and I've known Paris for years. And when I reached out to him, I actually said, hey, Paris, I'm writing this book. Do you know anyone that could be a really good fit to kind of write the foreword? And he said, you know what, Casey? Everyone knows me as this copywriter, but actually... I've made more money in the last year as a fractional CMO than I have as a copywriter. Now that's saying a lot because when I think of the highest paid copywriters in the business, there's just a handful of them and Paris is absolutely on that list. And I think that that right there is kind of case in point, the value of the book here, which is being a fractional CMO is getting paid for the strategy. If you're a copywriter like Paris, you get paid on the results of your work. Right? You write long-form copy, you write mailers, you write emails, you write website copy, you write um, direct response, uh, uh, you know, long-form mailers that are 30 pages long that you, you know, mail to a list. And you do that for a client. Let's say you do that and you're paid well for it. You're paid tens of thousands of dollars for that work. But that's not the whole business, right? Writing the copy isn't the business. As a copywriter, you're probably coming up with the whole funnel. You're like, yeah, we could sell to that list, but I think we should sell this to that list instead. Or, yeah, that's your offer, but I think we should change the offer to include this thing, or this add-on, or this freebie, or this upsell. You're kind of fundamentally thinking through the strategy of the business, but you're only getting paid on the copy. By being a fractional CMO, you actually get paid on the strategy. So, super tickled when Paris actually said to me, I'd like to write the forward kind of blew me away. I, I still have the text message. I was, I was kind of shocked that he said that. Um, but I sent him an, an advanced copy of the book and he was just like, yeah, this is it, man. This is, this is what I did as a copywriter to climb to the top in my field, charge the highest rates, produce really great results. And now as a fractional CMO. So just tickled to have Paris there. Uh, I've got a quote um, that I got from Ryan Levesque. If, if you don't know Ryan, Ryan is the founder of the Ask Method company. And Ryan is just so good at marketing. I really adore his work. Um, Ryan's got the book, The Ask Method, super worth picking up. Um, it came out a few years ago. It's a Wall Street Journal bestseller as well. Um, and in it, Ryan talks all about kind of a survey funnel and, and how he kind of form, f formalized the survey funnel to be useful for kind of all different types of business. I'm just a huge fan of it. Uh, just been a fan of Ryan's for a long time. So when he agreed to write a blurb for, for the book, I was, I was pretty stoked. Also, Josh Nelson, who is the founder of Seven Figure Agency. You know, if, if you're looking to build a marketing agency to seven figures, he's the guy to go to. He's the guy. Now, that agency model is a great model, and it does require a lot of moving pieces. So what's kind of fun is he serves the agency folks, and I think he does a job you know, kind of at the top of the game. He's, he's really good at helping people who want to start an agency to start an effective agency. But that requires hiring and management and, you know, lots of sales and that kind of stuff, uh, which is a great model. There's nothing wrong with that model. And some people just don't want to do all of that 
They want the shortest way to make a really healthy six figures. So Josh wrote, this may be the fastest way to add six figures to your income as a marketer. Casey shares what it takes to become an in-demand fractional CMO and diversify your income by serving multiple clients. So starting an agency, it's a great route if that's what you're looking to do. Um, but maybe you just want it super simple. You want to serve a couple clients, not just one, because if you serve one and you lose that client because of something completely outside of your control, you lose your livelihood, right? That's rough. So you want to serve clients at a high level, multiple clients, each paying you three to $15,000 a month or more, then you're in a really good spot, right? Then you can take more risks. You can invest in different companies. Um, you can uh, donate your time and, and support uh, nonprofits that you believe in or other organizations. Um, you can also work uh, for asymmetric upside. We talk about that in the book, which is how do you get asymmetric upside? How do you get an upside with a client far beyond just a regular cash pay? So you don't take all the cash that you normally would, but instead you get a percentage of the growth of the business. This is a great way for you to add wealth in, and not risk your livelihood. So I think Josh does a really great job in his program. I'm a big believer in what he's doing. And it's just a little different, right? Having an agency is different than being a fractional CMO. So if you'd like to be a fractional CMO, I think this book's for you. Uh, Kevin Rogers from Copy Chief um, wrote a really nice blurb, um, which, uh, I don't know, it's a little too embarrassing to read. He, he wrote so many nice things in here um, about me. But the big thing here is that he sees the value as a copywriter, which is copywriters get paid for copy. And if you want to get paid for the strategy that you provide, well, you got you to gotta be positioned for it. We've got some other really great folks who have left blurbs like Joel Irway, Vinny Fisher, Mark C. Winters, who's in the EOS um, ecosystem, Rory Stern, uh, a media buyer, Russell Lachlan, um, another great copywriter, Trevini Barber. So um, take a peek at those if, if you're interested. But what does the book get into? You might be wondering, like, why should you pick up a copy of the book? Well, the book is kind of what happened to me. And I'll tell you just basically my story was I was working at an agency and I was making like 25 bucks an hour. And then I moved up to like 50 bucks an hour. And then at that agency, um, I went out and started like doing some consulting. And it was just short lived. But the agency took a majority of my paycheck. They took over 50%. Even though I went out and sold it and serviced it, because it was under the umbrella of the agency, they took just a little over half. So when I wanted to increase my income, as I was kind of considering getting married and having a family, I knew I needed to just capture more of the value I was providing. I, I was already providing great value, but I wasn't capturing it. I was losing half of it to the agency. So I said, all right, I'm gonna venture out on my own and go do it. So I wouldn't try to do consulting on my own, but consulting has so many problems. If you've listened to the podcast before, you've heard me say, it's like a revolving door. You're always prospecting and selling and then servicing and spinning down clients time and time again. Consulting is short-lived. I was lucky if I had a consulting gig that lasted three months. So I left the agency, I became a consultant, and I had those short-lived, that short-lived income. I would have some really great banner months. You know, at the time, me making ten, fifteen thousand dollars in a month was a really big deal. But then I'd lose it the next month, and I'd be making two thousand or three thousand. So everything kind of comes out on a wash, and I was, you know, I was making under six figures, and it was just kind of a struggle. So even going off on my own and capturing that whole paycheck of the client, it was still difficult for me to hold on to the clients, and my income was a roller coaster. My girlfriend, now my wife, really didn't love that. You know, we struggled. Like, what's our budget? How do we budget for our life? You can't budget when you make $3,000 one month and $12,000 the next. You just can't budget because you don't know if the next three months will be $3,000 or they'll be $12,000 months. You just don't know. So I had to change that. I had to solve for that. So I decided that I had to do something different. And I knew I was onto something with this consulting, but how do I stick around longer? And that's where the fractional CMO thing kind of came to me. And honestly, it came to me as we were planning our wedding in Nashville. My head is like all full of all the wedding stuff. You know, my wife's talking about the table settings and we're thinking through all of this stuff. And, you know, what, what, what are we going to serve for food at the reception? And then do we want to serve like a surprise little bite of food after most of the food's gone? Like someone like kind of 
walks around and serves something, and we decided we would do like a little Nashville hot chicken bite, right? We're like thinking through all that stuff. My mind's like completely clouded with all these things that are going on, and I decided that I needed to kind of relax my brain, and I went for a walk with my dog at the KOA campground, because at the time we were living in an RV. We were at the KOA, uh, not KOA, we were in a campground um, in Nashville, um, just like northeast of the city, uh, right next to Yogi Berra. It was like deserted. It was snowing. We were like the only camper really there outside of the people who were like local, maybe um, construction workers. There was a couple trailers of construction workers that were there maybe for a project, but we were the only ones in, in the in the RV lot by and large. And I just remember walking in the backwoods of it with my dog and this idea just kind of coming to me like, oh, I should just be a CMO for these companies. That would let me stick around longer. That's kind of where this genesis came from. I should just be a CMO. I'll be a CMO for a couple companies. I didn't know it at the time, but turns out that's a fractional CMO. So I go in the book, in the introduction, I talk through the three biggest challenges as a fractional CMO. And these, these challenges are things I didn't appreciate when I got started. Um, I don't want to tell you everything in the book because I think it's really worth a read, but the first challenge is not having control over my pipeline. So the basic story there is I was able to build my fractional CMO practice, kind of consulting fractional CMO practice, up to $23,000 a month, which when you go from like a $3,000 or $12,000 a month to a consistent $23,000 a month, I was living large. I was feeling pretty good about myself. But then like overnight, I lost it all. And I really mean close to overnight, like in the span of seven to 10 days, I lost almost all that business. I had just hired my assistant um, and just like tanked, absolutely tanked. We had moved to uh, Philadelphia and we were in an Airbnb rental in Bal Kinwood. And man, I would just remember just like getting, the, getting two kind of back-to-back -back calls over the course of a week and just losing all the business. And we had just moved there after this wedding, you know, and... We paid for the wedding ourselves. So, like, it was an expensive wedding. Um, it was expensive travel. We had just moved. We got a rental, and we were going to, like, you know, hunt for a place, like maybe a house, maybe an apartment, uh, when we moved to Philly, and lost all my income kind of overnight. So the first big lesson that I learned was that I have to have complete control over my pipeline. And if you take nothing else from me, just know that having control over your pipeline is the secret to your success. If you're saying, oh, it would be nice, Casey, to join the CMOX Accelerator uh, for lead gen, you know, because maybe we'd pass you leads. Like, never bet on anybody else passing you leads. The only person getting you out of where you are and putting you where you want to be in a place of, you know, wealth, um, in a place of consistency, of confidence, is you. You have to have a pipeline. It's just like kind of a mental shift. You got to take care of it. Now, you can surround yourself with other people that are doing it and... Um, use proven processes that generate business and keep your pipeline full so that you can have multiple sales conversations a month and close, you know, uh, 30, 40, 50% of them. That's pretty exciting. Uh, but you have to commit yourself to doing that. So that was one of the first big challenges that I had was I didn't have any control over my pipeline. I was using word of mouth. And the second one was I actually wasn't giving my clients the results that they needed. I would get squirrely about things. Man, I just remember just like working tirelessly, just calling everyone I knew, just to figure out what to do next with a client. And I just didn't know the answer. And I'd kind of show up on calls and try to lead the client, and I just didn't have a process. So it didn't matter that I could sell them. I wasn't giving them any value. So obviously that contract term was gonna be short. They were gonna bail as quickly as they could. And then the last thing, obviously, was that my contracts were short-lived. When you don't service people well, you don't keep your contracts very long. I learned that thought, you know, the hard way. I was doing every step along the way. Um, and what I just realized was that I wasn't doing a good job. I wasn't providing the actual result that kept me around. Now, you see like some agencies, um, some consultants, they come in and they've got one trick. They've got one playbook and they deploy it for, you know, the client, whoever hired them. And then they're done in 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. And that's it. That's all they got. That's kind of what I was. I was like a 30 to 90 day guy. Maybe if I stuck around six months, I was lucky. Like really it was that the client was super, super screwed up. And my 30 or 60 day playbook just took six months to deploy. 
That's really what it was. I didn't have anything longer term than that. So what I decided to do was come up with a way to serve my clients longer and more effectively. I call that the fractional CMO method. And I go into detail on what that is in the book and kind of all the pieces of it. Uh, I had three big lessons in becoming a fractional CMO that I get into, and uh, there's some painful stories in that. Um, then as, as the book kind of goes on, um, I detail pretty, pretty specifically kind of the fall that I had, kind of the, the awful um, kind of financial bottoming out, what that actually meant. And if you've never experienced, oh man, what was it like? If you've never experienced losing it all, and I mean losing it all, like selling stocks that I was given for my high school graduation. I mean, getting a loan and like doing that whole like move the debt from one credit card to the other. I mean, like taking jewelry and selling it. Like if you haven't gone through that, whew, I'm excited for you. I don't want you to ever go through that. But let me tell you, the pain of going through that is significant. It's so significant that you do whatever it takes to never experience it again. I mean, you can choose to do that, right? You can also choose to just like live in that feeling and, and feel sorry for yourself. But if you're growth-minded and, and you're willing to take on the responsibility for your own life, that can be a turning point for you. Some people need that as a wake-up call. I don't know. Did I need it? <laughs> I don't know. I certainly don't, you know, didn't want to have it. Um, but it changed everything for me. It changed everything for me. It changed how I looked at business. And I'll just tell you, I used to look at marketing problems in this kind of fluffy light, like, oh, this would be nice to do. Oh, well, I guess we didn't make any sales this month, but maybe next month we will. To now, it's all driven on the result. Right? Like, you want to drive results for your clients. If you fundamentally get what it's like to kind of lose it all, you know what's on the line. You know that while the company can have good cash flow, it could all dry up overnight, and you have to keep the sales spigot on through marketing. And it's your responsibility to drive either sales or you know, marketing qualified leads to the sales team or whatever the outcome is. Marketing has to deliver something. If you're a marketer who's always just kind of hung your hat on um, branding or hung your hat on web design, but never on the results that those things generate, you're gonna find yourself out of a job, right? Like branding is great. I love, I love great branding. Um, there's a website under consideration from Brand New that just kind of dissects new brands. I love it. I love going on that, uh, putting it up on my iPad, just kind of chilling out, you know, with a Cortado and, and looking through like the latest rebrandings. That stuff's really cool. But do rebrandings actually generate revenue that's measurable? You could argue yes, but I think most businesses don't see a direct revenue impact from rebranding. I think a website rebuild is an easy thing to do. It's an easy thing to say like, oh, I hate our website and wanting to get it rebuilt. But if that website doesn't actually produce a better outcome and it just makes you feel better, is your added confidence really worth that investment? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I wager to guess it probably isn't most of the time. Most people who say they want a new website are really just doing like, be busy work instead of focusing on the thing that matters the most. If you follow uh, any of the work that Dan Kennedy has done, the marketer, you know that his websites have always looked awful. I mean, I think that guy like tries to use more than five fonts on a web page. It's just atrocious, but he generates money from his website. Now, I think that there is definitely a line between an effective website and a beautiful website. And if there's a Venn diagram and there's that you know, overlapping portion, that's probably where you should be. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. Um, but I would rather have a ugly website that produces great results than a beautiful website that doesn't produce great results. So, you know, kind of consider that. So me hitting rock bottom gave me this opportunity to rethink my kind of approach to marketing. I had to do things that actually mattered to the bottom line and I had to get real with a p &L. I had to really appreciate business growth instead of just vanity marketing. Instead of just saying like, oh, we ran an ad campaign. You know, just like this whole uh, marketing bingo of like doing all the campaigns for a client and just saying, I did them all. Instead of saying, 
instead of doing all those campaigns, I'm going to do one and I'm going to generate the greatest result possible. So hitting rock bottom gave me that focus. Maybe you have that focus. Maybe you don't. If you don't, consider how replaceable you are right now with where you're working. Could you be easily replaced by kind of anybody? Could you be replaced by someone on Upwork who's a lot cheaper than you? Or are you the kind of person that's generating an actual result that's outsized to your cost? Let's say you pay a salesperson $100,000. They should be making the business at least $400,000. That's good. Those are good numbers. So what is it for you? What, what's the outcome or impact that you're, you're producing? You got to get clear on that. If you're not producing a big impact for your clients, you're not going to stick around. So I go into that a bit here in the book, here in the first chapter. Then there's this chapter called, Should You Become a Fractional CMO? Which I think is a really good question. I have a worksheet if you want to grab it. Go to cmox.co slash toolkit. cmox.co slash toolkit. And you can watch um, a little training I have there. I think it's like an eight-minute training with a PDF. And it's all about, should you become a fractional CMO or not? I think one of the things that you should do for yourself is if you're listening to this audio, if you're listening to this podcast episode, you should just decide if you should be a fractional CMO or not. Pause this, go to cmox.co slash toolkit, go grab the toolkit, um, you know, watch the video on what are you solving for, do the worksheet, and just choose. And if the answer is no, unsubscribe from this podcast and stop listening to me. Like, it's not where you should focus on. You should go focus on the thing you should focus on. But if you come to the conclusion that the answer is yes, then... You should probably take steps to make that come true, don't you think? All right, um, talk about your effective hourly rate. We talk about Shannon. She did $28,000 a month in recurring monthly business um, as a fractional CMO. That's pretty sick. She, she closed that in, in two months. Um, then more about what a fractional CMO does. I go into like, some people think a fractional CMO is an agency. I see some of this online. It doesn't make any sense to me. When people say, you're fractional CMO, you're outsourced CMO. But really, it's just an agency, and they put a strategist on it. I'm, to me, that, that's not it. An agency is not a fractional CMO. A fractional CMO is a person who is a stakeholder inside of a business, even if just with title. You know, they may not be given any kind of um, interest in the business, right? But they have the title, and, and, and they're kind of championed as this leader inside of the business. And it's their job to build and lead the marketing team. And sometimes it does make sense to use an agency. And if you have an agency, you can absolutely find additional work for your agency as a fractional CMO. But the core of what a fractional CMO does is they're in the business. So they step into a company and they act as the CMO. And you expect them, you sh they should be expected to operate as a CMO, which is to be looking for the best interest of the company, not of their own agency or of their own pocketbook. So it's taking an, uh, an otherwise, I would say, adversarial relationship, which is between company and agency, and finding a symbiotic relationship between company and CMO. For you as the fractional CMO, you're just doing that for a couple companies, and you get paid really well, and you make a really great living, and you make a really big impact. But you're actually like vying for their success. L let me say it this way. Have you ever talked to a salesperson at a software company? Like you're looking at getting a new ESP or CRM or something, and you call a sales salesperson. They're going to tell you all the reasons that their software is the best software. Some people even make the mistake of thinking that the salesperson is their friend. Like it's, it's so silly. The, the salesperson is trying to feed their family. They absolutely have an antagonistic relationship with the customer because they just want them to be a customer so that they can close the deal and then pitch them over to the customer support manager and have that person deal with all the headaches. If you're an agency owner or trying to do all the work yourself and you're also the CMO, it's this kind of adversarial relationship. What you want is you want to be the trusted person to lead the marketing team, build and lead the marketing team to create whatever outcomes it is that the business needs. So that, that's it. You're like charged as the general, the leader of marketing. So I go into that in, in, um, in the third chapter. 
So once you kind of have your head on straight and kind of know what you're doing as a fractional CMO and you kind of appreciate that this is a very quickly growing industry, um, that companies are looking for fractional CMOs, <laughs> you should see the quality of people that are coming to me saying, I'm looking for a fractional CMO. Do you have anyone that can staff my org? Do you have anyone that can come in and be our fractional CMO? These companies, I, it's, it's, it blows me away. The caliber of companies that are looking for a fractional CMO because they've been burned by full-time CMOs. So they don't want to take a full-time cash risk. Uh, it, it, it is unfortunate that oftentimes we have to shoulder the burden of poor performing marketers or marketing agencies that came before us. Yeah, that's true though, right? I mean, it's like getting in a relationship with someone who had, you know, dated a bunch of losers before you. Like, you're not a loser, but you kind of have to deal with the damage that they, that they, that they, they laid. Um, the fractional CMO industry is growing dramatically, and companies are looking to kind of de-risk by having a fractional CMO, but they're also like really excited about having a process-driven person who can create significant change and growth in their business. So I'm seeing that every single day I'm seeing that. Um, and I think if you kind of looked around, you'd, you'd start seeing it too. Chapter four, I get into red hot leads. So how do you identify your ideal client? And then how do you generate a pipeline full of them? It's pretty important stuff. The next thing, how do you convert them? How do you convert the leads? Are you good at sales? I'll tell you, there's a way to do sales as a fractional CMO. And then there's a way not to. Uh, the short of it is, is that you need to put yourself in a position where people are trying out to be your client instead of you begging to work for them. It's just a position of power. It's a switch. If you can actually create change, why are you begging for work? Put yourself in a position where people come to you and you kind of gatekeep to make sure that you're only talking to the right people. I've got a bunch of details in the book on how to do that. That's in chapter five. Then chapter six is, okay, you got the client, right? Now what? How do you serve them? What's your service and delegation strategy? What's the cadence for it? How do you lead? I've got a great case study in there from uh, copywriter Russ Reynolds, all about what he's doing. Then I go into our framework. This is kind of the coveted framework for what I've worked so long on, which is the functional marketing framework. This is how to serve companies. This is how you know Everything that you're doing is the right thing to do for your client, and you don't have any question that there's something else on the table. So many marketers, I see them, they're like a marketing director or VP marketing or ugh, sometimes even CMO, and they have like one or two tools, and that's all they're doing. They're like, oh, we should be everywhere. We should be on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and Pinterest, I guess. Uh, we should be doing like a webinar every week in a, in a really long form newsletter. And um, we should be going to these conferences. And they come up with like this litany of all this stuff to do. And they're never doing the one thing that drives the biggest result until they reach diminishing returns and then moving on to the next thing and then the next thing. This is the way that you get successful. You don't get successful by like being well rounded you know, as a company and kind of doing all the marketing campaigns, you do it by like being deadly at like one or two or three things. And then you build this dynamic marketing team. Maybe it includes agencies or contractors or full-time employees or interns, like whatever makes sense for the business. You build that inside of the organization and you watch that business grow. So you might say, you know what's most important for us is SEO and Facebook ads. That's the most important thing. Once we master that, yeah, let's go buck wild and we can try getting on radio and TV and we can go to big events and yada yada. But let's go SEO hard and Facebook ads hard. That's our, that's our path to righteousness. Or maybe you say it's um, supporting the sales team and it's live events. It's all different depending on the business. But you choose a few things as a fractional CMO you create KPIs around it, and then you charge the team to go make that happen. Every single quarter, you're kind of renewing these outcomes that you're having everyone run to. And listen, you're never the person assigned to anything. I think that's a game changer for a lot of people. You're never assigned to anything. You're responsible for everything, right? You're responsible for the successful outcome uh, for the quarter, but you're not actually doing any day-to-day -day tasks. You're there to lead and support. Support sometimes looks like someone says a question and you're like, uh, give me one second. You Google it and you're like, here's the right answer. Just go that way. And they're like, oh, wow, you saved me. Right? 
Other times you might say, oh, I've done this before. Try that. Other times you say, I don't know the answer. Let's talk it out and figure out where you should go next. You're supporting people as a leader and not as the person doing the work alongside of them. It's like you have infantrymen and women. You have, you have these folks that are working kind of for you in your department and you're leading them. Every morning they show up to work on time, ready to go. And I think of that Shakespearean quote, uh, I see you gray, I see you standing like greyhounds in the slips. Like that's what it is. Like they're ready. They're ready to charge and cry, you know, oh Henry. And your job is to focus that effort on doing the thing that matters the most. So many people show up to work and they just wish they had a leader that was a good leader. They're willing to work late hours. They're willing to put their best years of their life into a company if they have a great leader that pushes them along. That's what you can be. That's what you can offer them. Clarity, direction, leadership, support. Maybe a little bit of love, right? Like the support component is huge. You reach out to someone and say, hey, I want you to take Friday off. No questions. You've been working too late. Take Friday off. They're like, whoa, okay. (laughs) Right? And then... Three weeks later, you're like, hey, this thing broke. I need you to stick around late. Um, Stick around late. Fix it. Let's have it all live by 8 o'clock tonight. And they're like, you got it. That's what you get to do. Like, that's the level of of leadership that you can provide as the CMO. Think about the lives that you can change. Ugh. And you're channeling this, this talent into a business outcome. And as long as you're working with businesses that you love because you filled your pipeline with them, because you know who you want to work with, because you started with the end in mind, here are your outcomes. You're making a ton of money. I mean, we've got members that pull in 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 a month, and, and they're working like 30 hours a week. Um, you know, the target for a lot of folks is to build a fractional CMO practice to a half million dollars a year. Some other people, they're just pretty cool with an extra $10,000 a month, you know, kind of like whatever it is for you. Um, and then we've got the really hungry people who want that half million a year in cash and then they want to do asymmetric upside and they're willing to kind of do whatever it takes and, you know, make it really big. That's super cool too. This is all available as a fractional CMO. This like isn't available anywhere else in marketing. Like you can go be an ad person. I mean, sure. But like, I don't know about you, but ads are kind of simple, you know, like ads don't take... (sighs) That, like, if someone sets up an ad campaign and you pay them for it and they run it for three months, someone else could probably take it over that's cheaper than the person that started it. But the marketing strategy and leadership, that can't be replaced. You lose a leader, whew, they're going to feel that. So that means that you're going to be there a long time. So you're going to make a lot of money. And because you started with the end in mind and you chose the right client type, you're going to love the work that you do. You're going to show up every day and people are going to listen to you and you're going to support them and you're going to love on them and you're going to build them up and make this the best years of their career. Let's say you're only with a company for two, three years, but those people are your direct reports. In 10, 20, 30 years, they will reflect on their career and they'll say, man, back when I worked at that company and this guy was there, phew, this woman, this person was there, they, they really built me up. That was... That was the juncture in my life. That was the, the impetus. You know, I was in this liminal space around, you know, moving to the next big thing in my career or kind of staying with where I was. They pushed me to the next big thing. How cool is that? You'll be able to create that outcome. If the companies that you're working with are doing good in the world, you'll generate more good than you could ever probably do on your own because you have a, a vehicle, a business that's producing that good. It's incredible. It's incredible. You're also ensuring that you're not working to death, right? You're not working. I I even think 40 hours a week is kind of bonkers. I don't know. Call me crazy, but um, I don't like to work 40 hours a week. I don't, I'm not good for 40 hours a week. I'm like, I'm solid for 30 if I want to work that much, right? But like beyond that, my brain doesn't, it just doesn't, doesn't work at the same capacity. Is that true for you? So the fractional CMO role allows you to really build people and companies up while you're making a bigger impact and taking home a bigger paycheck. One of the ethos that we have here is solve bigger problems. That's it, solve bigger problems. That's what I want you to do is solve bigger problems. So much so that that's 
actually the last name. That's the chapter of the, uh, of, that's the name of the last chapter of the book. Solve bigger problems. That's it. If you're committed to solving bigger problems, you're always going to be moving up. You're never going to play in this space of just like doing what you did before. And that's hopefully good enough. But what you'll find is that let's say, you know, if we we're going to stay in copywriter, though, this makes sense for website builders. This makes sense for media buyers, for um, content writers, for social media people, for agencies of all type of marketers of all type. But let's just say you're a copywriter and you sell right now, a, let's say a sales letter for $10,000, just as a, just as a number. So you're a good sale, uh, a good copywriter, um, not the top in your field, but um, you know you're solid. You're you're C list, doing a ten thousand dollar sales letter. Well, what are you going to charge for that same sales letter in two years? Ten thousand dollars, eleven thousand dollars. What about five years later? Are you still going to be the same person who just kind of rolls up their sleeves and bangs out sales letter after sales letter? Or are you going to move up to bigger, more exciting problems and have really these like? armies that are organizations kind of bring your vision to life. Man, it's so exciting to have that. I gave up on writing email copy, loading it into Pardot or MailChimp or whatever, finding the right list and sending it. I gave up on that a long time ago. So what was the next big problem I solved? Well, it was some short-term marketing consulting. And then it was fractional CMO, being the leader of these companies. That was the final reinvention. And then anything else that I've done is just improve the quality of the companies that I work with. So you can go work with a company that solves small problems and they don't make a whole lot of money. And it's like, it's fine. Like there's nothing wrong with it, but it's maybe a little boring and, you know, it doesn't really wet your whistle. It doesn't, it doesn't get you excited. Do you really want to stick with them for another five years? I mean, maybe. I mean, maybe if the income's cool and you can kind of kick back and do whatever you want, then like, sure. But if you're like hungry for like continual growth and intellectual um, stimulation and challenge, and you want to be rewarded for your growth, ooh, fractional CMO is where it's at, I think. There's probably few other things, right? Like maybe you can go to academia, but first of all, good luck getting a job. <laughs> Secondly, if you get one, you're always fighting for grants, you know, you're fighting to publish and blah, blah, blah. But the fractional CMO has this, I, I think this very unique opportunity. And um, I, I just think it's it's super, super exciting. It's what companies are looking for. Big companies are looking for this. Um, companies that are top companies in their industry are looking for fractional CMOs. I don't want to give too much information, but I'm thinking of one right now. Um, one of the largest, uh, no, the largest company of a specific vertical in Norway asked me about a fractional CMO. They said, hey, we're looking for a fractional CMO to help us take our product or service into the U.S. market. Oh, wow. Multi-billion dollar company looking for that. Now, they're not looking for someone working 40 hours a week. They're looking for someone to work much less. How exciting is that opportunity? That company is not looking for a copywriter or a media buyer. They're looking for someone to come in and lay the strategy. And then all those other things can get hired. You could be the person that does that. So... I've got the book. Um, you can buy it on Amazon. You can buy it on Barnes & Noble. Uh, my mom sent me an email told me that you could buy it at Target. That's cool. But if you want to get a cheaper copy, um, we've got digital copies on the website uh, and also audiobooks. Whole kind of kerfuffle going on right now around audiobook distribution. So the best way to get the audiobook is just to pick it up over at the cmox.co site. So head over to cmox.co slash book. cmox.co slash book. And uh, you can grab a copy of the ebook, which is the uh, EPUB and Mobi. Um, if you've got a Kindle, you can just take the Mobi and just put it on your Kindle. Super simple. Or you can read it on a Kindle reader on your computer. Also, the PDF is there too. So three files. If you want to do something with them, you can. If you just want to read the PDF in your browser, you can do that too. And then also... There's the audiobook, and there's two audiobook file formats. If you're a nerd like me, MP3, which you know what that is, right? It's just a three and a half hour long kind of song. Um, the other file is an M4B. This is a bookmarkable audio file. Uh, whenever I listen to long audios, that's the file format I like. You can load that on your cell phone. You can load that on you know your media player or whatever. And when you play it and then stop, when you come back to it, it's bookmarked. 
So you kind of get all the benefits there. Um, and any reader will will play that, right? So like you could do that on your iPhone, you could do that on Android, you could do that on VLC, probably even do it on what Windows Media Player. So those are the file formats. You can grab that at cmox.co slash book. And then also, um, I did a masterclass that you can grab there if you're interested. Um, that masterclass is all about how to nail your niche as a fractional CMO. So if you're thinking, I want to be a fractional CMO, but like, mm, where do I get started? What would my niche be? Who would I serve? Uh, the Nail Your Niche is, is a really great masterclass all on that. And I went really deep and kind of didn't hold anything back around um, how to choose the right niche for you. And again, like, man, like, I, I just can't say this enough. If you have the end in mind and you know what you want, you either do the work to get it or you are unwilling to pay the price. I'm laying out in front of you a vehicle and I'm saying, this is a great vehicle. Grab the book, go listen to the audio, go get the toolkit, go through the what are you solving for training at cmox.co slash toolkit and just see for yourself if being a fractional CMO makes sense to you. If it does, like this is the shortcut. This is the only published shortcut that I've ever seen on it. Uh, it's years of my experience written into 148 or nine pages um, and it's a number one Wall Street Journal bestseller. You can get the audiobook, you can get the ebook, you can skim through it, you can listen to the audiobook um, <laughs> at 2x if you want to hear me sound like a chipmunk. But I think you owe it to yourself to either yes it or no it. Say, yes, this is what I'm doing and I'm committing to it, or no, I'm not, and I'm going to move on to this other thing. Either answer is completely fine, but just do yourself a favor of you know, making that mental commitment to either saying yes to it or saying no to it and then moving on. All right. Um, we're here to serve you. If I can help you at all, become a fractional CMO and build a book of business where you have a half million dollar year fractional CMO practice, I want to help. Uh, we've got a great team. We've got an incredible team. I mean, we just uh, uh, recently hired an additional person to our team to support our members to help them kind of get over any of their mental blocks around charging the rates that we're talking about. Some people are saying, oh, I've never charged more than $2,000 for this. It's like, well, let's have you work with bigger clients and charge more and you'll produce a better impact by following this process. So we've got the team to support you on solving bigger problems and delegating everything except leadership. If you want to be the leader and not the person who's doing the work, but the person who's coming up with the strategy and leading the team, if you want people that respect you as a leader, follow your lead and deliver results based on the vision that you set forth for them, you might have what it takes to be a fractional CMO. So grab a copy of the book, cmox.co slash book. And after you do that, you can book a call with my team. Um, you can book a call and uh, ask any questions you want. We'll see if we can help you. And if we can, um, we'll share what that would look like. All right. I, here's what I wish for you. I wish that you have clarity in what your next steps are. And if this is the next step, go get a copy of the book. Kind of commit yourself to being a fractional CMO. Um, it's, it's a blue ocean. Like, I don't know how many fractional CMOs there are. 150 in the world right now. You're so early you're so early. If you can just commit and stick to it and like get into the market and win a couple clients and see what happens to your income and your time and your impact, I think you'll find out how addicting it is to be in this role. So go grab a copy of the book, cmox.co slash book. Talk to you soon. See ya. Thank you for joining us for today's show. For more information and episodes, visit our site at fractionalcmoshow.com go ahead and punch that like and subscribe button on your favorite podcast app. It means a lot, at least to my mom. 